Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to the weekend recap number nine of our official series, where we watch some moments from this past weekend's stream on our server with some of my commentary. As always, the server and Discord links are in the description. Also include timestamps for the different tracks in the video, so feel free to jump around if there's any that catch your eye. Today, we're going to be focusing on a little bit of the proximity, but I also wanted to talk about... I'm not really sure how to phrase it, but maybe like um, drift intelligence or like tandem intelligence, something along that nature. We'll see what the title of the video ends up being. But basically, I wanted to show a lot of clips of not the closest door-to-door -door proximity that we've been seeing, at least in the last series or the last video, but rather more of a, a different perspective of being, I think for most of these clips, more in the mid slash back of the train. Especially with our server too, you know, we're really focused on having really big trains. It's always really enjoyable like that. So I kind of wanted to give this video out there to you guys that are looking to improve in more of a train setting maybe and give you some insight and some ideas, <clears throat> excuse me, of what I'm thinking of. So let's talk about it. Here we're on a chase with two cars in front. I think we're about to switch to another run though. So here we are on our fourth position. So I've driven with Sniper. I don't know about the second person and I've driven with Yasko there in the front. Now, one thing I want to call out here, even though I've driven <clears throat> with these two drivers, I haven't driven with the second driver. And you can see little mistakes or even big mistakes that that second position makes is going to impact you a lot. So here I'm just kind of adding a little bit more of what I call like a shock absorber or maybe like a proximity buffer where I'm following, I'm trying to match the transition timing, which is really important. And there you can see a little bit of a tap from Sniper just because he wasn't sure or there was like some little bit of a turbulence on P2. And then uh, he messed up his transition, which then messed up mine. I didn't look immediately at the track cam, but if I don't have enough of that buffer, uh, you'll see a little bit of that turbulence go all the way from P2 to, you know, P5 and et cetera, like all the way down the train. Kind of like a, an accordion is how I typically call it. But we're going to get more into it here. Brooklyn, I think everyone has seen before, but it's good starting track. Now, this is a track that we haven't ever driven on. Shout out to Clutch Gang CG for OGO Akoji. I hope I'm kind of close. Here, I'm just simply doing a lot of lead runs. And actually on this track, I didn't have a ton of chases. There was a lot of leads because it was a new one. And then there was a lot of like technical sections. So we'll talk about it on a full run because we have, as customary, two lead runs and two chases. I hope I don't eat my words, but I do think that our second quote unquote lead run was more of like a soft lead slash chase. And you'll see what I mean. But let's talk about the track while we're waiting for that to come up here. Here you can see a lot of different elevation changes, a lot of sweeping corners. I'm really thinking, and especially when I'm trying to test out what lines might make sense or not, I'm really thinking of if I was in a train, if I was leading a train here, or you're, but yeah, I guess really basically leading a train, what is the smooth li smoothest lines that I can take to stay consistent and not have any jerky movements and have fallable lines? So you'll see, you know, here it's not the great, the greatest of runs or maybe greatest of leads, but I'm just trying to fill out the track this is a, a brand new track. I think it was released actually very recently, if not like this week or last week. But I'm just kind of filling out the different areas, see what makes sense, what doesn't. You can see I'm not looking like super confident in any of these uh, lines that I'm taking here. So we're going to switch to what I believe is, okay, actually it is a full lead run. So here you're going to go all the way up. Now this corner I was trying to take it out. You could saw the last one I was more inside, that one I was more out. I lost a lot of momentum, which to me, I don't want to be doing on a lead run, especially if there's, again, a lot of people behind me. It's going to kind of mess up people from probably P3 down. And then here, same thing, testing out the e-brake a little bit to see how that feels. It is a little bit of a gradual slope up. So I'm just going on the inside. Here, I can kind of fill out the entire outside. It doesn't feel like I have to go in super hard. And then this part here too, another like wide sweeper. I did kind of cut on the inside a little bit to set me up good for the other corner. And then this part is really tricky. So you almost, to me, I almost feel like I'm actually straight here. I mean, you can see from the track cam, I'm not. It feels like I'm so straight, really extending it. My gearing, because I like to just try to run one gear, really struggling. I was kind of topping out as you could probably hear there. And then here going a little bit on the inside, I think I could 
probably go a little bit wider if I wanted to. And again, I'm just thinking of keeping that forward momentum going forward uh, and not sideways, I guess, if that makes sense to you guys. I want to make sure I have that forward momentum because everyone, at least here in a set of Corsa, uh, and I would probably argue real life too, is going to expect that forward go. So here, Turbo throwing a crazy entry in, literally like grinding the rail there. And here you can see, and, and especially like look at his lines that he's taking too, and kind of think about what the lines that I talked about. I think in general, his thought process is the same, but you can see right there, I had to pull in and scrub a lot of speed to match how far out on the corner he got. I think he might've just caught a little bit outside of the track. Again, it is like this weird sweeper. And then here, you'll notice I pulled a little bit too, too much e-brake, but he was able to keep that momentum. Maybe could have pulled it in a little bit uh, at the end of that corner, but you see that forward momentum while staying on the outside too. So it's not that you have to always cut in. Sometimes it just depends on your car and there you can see him cutting on the inside corner, taking a little bit more of middle inside lines there. And then same thing, I completely lose him because uh, I wasn't really set up properly. And then here I'm just trying to really get back in sync then. So I talk a lot about not rushing back to try to catch someone's door. I'd say this is probably in the middle ground of a little bit of aggressive, but still chaseable. You see someone behind me still being able to follow. Could be a skill uh, on their side, but hopefully I was being at least a little bit consistent and predictable. And then here, just trying to stick with him and his lines. You can kind of hear my car struggling. I think his gearing is set up probably a lot better. Uh, this is a new track for me, so you know, still something that I was trying to learn. And then I saw him run that, so I tried to run it myself and uh completely grinded it it looked cool but i think for like a train situation that's not really gonna work very well and that's the same thing like may maybe i'll talk about it later but here now we have fresh in the lead and we're gonna kind of look and and again i this is a track that's new to basically everyone in this uh, lobby so everyone has a lot of different lines i'm trying to just kind of fill out see what he does you can see a lot more of a proximity that i'm generating between me and him just to make sure that i'm not stacked up on his door and especially so you can see there's a lot of different uh styles that he's bringing to his lead that i'm having to try to adapt to and i think if i was too close to him you know one of the biggest things that i try not to do is mess up people's uh driving and their lines so especially on a chase if i mess him up you saw on brooklyn i'm gonna mess someone up behind me and then also i'm gonna ruin his lead run and kind of sour uh, his experience, not not like just in our server, but in any server, right? You want to, especially if you have a good lead, you want to make sure you're giving them space, not making them nervous, not making them have to take bad lines because they're afraid that you're going to hit them. But I think what I was going to mention, basically, maybe I'll mention it on this transition to the next track. Uh, I want to talk about 360s in trains. Uh, might be a, a rough topic, but here we are on, man, no one corrected me in the last video or made fun of me, which I appreciate, but I think it's uh, Tabuska. I think that's just officially what I'm going to call it. Anything else, I'm going to mess it up. But this track has been still a challenge for me. I was really hoping that maybe this weekend we, we were swapping through tracks. We put up a vote. People wanted to run this track. I was really hoping I would get a little bit better on these chases to, to really give a cool video uh, visually to watch, but I just, I honestly just, I'm still struggling. I'm still learning it. I do feel like every time we come back though, I continue to make more and more improvements, but I'm still a little bit, I think actually for me personally, I'm a lot further than I like to be. But let me, let me uh, talk about that last statement that I was making earlier is, you know, we talk about taking lines that are predictable, taking lines that are going to continue on that forward momentum and not lose momentum for the people behind you. But one thing I, I said, right, is these 360s. So I know that it's pretty cool. I know that it can be cool and it can look cool, IRL or in sim. But really, like in a train, like I've said this in our last couple of videos, I think, and maybe out throughout this whole series, but in a train uh, in the middle, in the front, I mean, really anywhere minus the very front. And you can maybe argue this doesn't apply to the very back, but basically you shouldn't be throwing 360s it's it's not really possible to follow like that i think irl the biggest like tandem 360 was literally that two cars and they kind of knew what was going to go on kind of the same idea for backies but i think that is a little bit more adaptable depending on who you're driving with 
and if you're used to driving with them. But in general, you want to, again, have a predictable line that's going to be very consistent. And then you also want to make sure uh, you're not making any, uh, I guess when I say predictable, I also mean that you're not braking super hard. You're not really going on throttle out of nowhere, th things like that, if that makes sense. So all this to say, like, how to be a good train member, in my opinion, those are really big, especially if you're going into the servers and you're like, man, I just, I don't know why, like, I try to follow people and, like, I, they just don't want to drive with me or I go behind them and then they reset, like, you know, maybe essentially, or, or you know, maybe you jump in a train and they, like, don't, you, you can kind of vibe it out, but they don't really want you to be there, I guess, in a sense. All those kind of things set into more of a condensed point is, like, being a good train member there's a little bit of etiquette involved and i hopefully want to make a more broad etiquette video in the future but the better your etiquette regardless of your skill level i think people are going to be a lot more welcoming and accepting and if you're seeing that people are not really wanting to drive with you you might want to look at that and say like am i being a, a driver or a drifter on the track that i would want others to be right and and if you want to have a good chase you got to have a good lead and you got to have a good lead by being consistent and taking lines that are followable, right? So maybe a little bit of a soapbox. Just wanted to kind of throw that out there for those of you that might be encountering that or just some more thoughts, especially for, for this line. I don't, I'm not very good at this track at all, as you can see. So I don't really have a ton of like line commentary to give you. I'm still learning a lot of it. I think once I memorize it, I'll be in a better spot. But I just kind of want to add this section in there for, for everyone and let me know what you think, man. Like, I'm always receptive. I always like to hear what you guys say. I've been reading the comments on every single video and replying to most, if not all of them. So, if you guys have any thoughts, if you agree, disagree, genuinely let me know. I'd actually be pretty curious what you guys think to, to my feedback on this point. But anyway, our next track into this series today, I believe, yep, we are on Rhythm and Flow. Now, what's crazy is, I think if I remember correctly, we actually end up on this track three times this weekend, quickly becoming a, if not already, a crowd favorite. But now let's talk about more specifically what we came here to talk about, is that proximity, you know, being a good train member, and how hopefully that I'm able to, to show you guys what that looks like. So here we are on P5 of this train. You can see there's a lot of different gaps going on. There's a gap between one and uh, P1, P2, gap between uh, P3, P4, and then you see a little bit of lag there too. So I'm just kind of reading what Sniper's doing, or uh, DA Sniper's doing, how he's running his lines, I'm trying to keep a little proximity. You can see actually there's there was at least three cars behind me. So really, I always try to drive like there's someone right behind me or that there's a couple people behind me. And, and hopefully again, that, that, that shows up, but I do want to kind of explain that's why you don't see as maybe as an aggressive uh, door weld, door to door action as you might want to see, or or maybe even expect to see, right? But I'm not that good of a of a driver, so it's definitely not like that. But here again, we calling back to the Brooklyn track. You saw when one person in the front or in the train has a tap, and it kind of like offsets the the lead driver, but then it also kind of adds some turbulence to the train. So here I am having a little bit bigger of a proximity gap, but I'm still just trying to make sure that I'm able to have a chaseable line for those behind me. So here Mod just throwing a great line, very easy to follow, very consistent of a driver, very fun to follow into the track, honestly. But our next one on the list here, I will definitely butcher this one, is Tashu Takshukima Kartland. Uh, that's as close as I'm gonna go. Very unique track. I was really sad to hear that it didn't have more pit boxes, but it, it was actually a pretty like um, like a replayable or like a hot lap like where you just felt good going back and back and back. So let's talk about the lines first. So here kind of self-explanatory taking more of these like mid inside lines. <clears throat> this one feels like you can run actually the outside where that white line is. You kind of want to throw your tires there. Unfortunately, it wasn't like a track cam, but you can see from the overhead. Some people were doing uh, a double manja here. I really prefer this extension. And in this part, I was really struggling with. So earlier I said, hey, don't throw in backies. This track does seem like it does kind of welcome that into that entry position. If everyone's on the same page, it's cool. But you can see I made a big mistake. I mean, 
arguably a very unchaseable, if not very hard to chase lead that I'm throwing down, but I I'm learning the track. I'm just kind of out there. This was, I was just trying to see what I can do. But here we are now on a chase with our good friend Unlimited. We're going to see him, I believe. Yep. Go all the way out. Now I'm kind of like reading him and really because I'm learning the track, we've talked about this before. I'm seeing what he does and I'm kind of learning how he's taking these different entries or these different lines as well. You can see a little bit based off his line going outside and then having to cut in. He scrubbed a lot of speed or maybe better said a lot of momentum. I don't think uh, it, I don't know how noticeable that is on the video, but here again, I'm just leaving a lot of proximity between me and him because I'm still learning. And, uh, you know, obviously I think, I think this is the first time on the track. I wouldn't like bet money on it, but I think so. And then here again, trying to see where he's entering. I don't pull enough on the e-brake, end up just straight up diving. You can see from the track cam, completely washed on the chase. But I think it was important to show, like, I, I do like to show how there's a little bit of struggle with new tracks. Uh, a lot of people will only see tracks that people have driven a lot or tracks that people are really good at. But like, yeah, it's a learning process. Like every track is different. Every track has different gearing. Like there's just so many things that go into it that at least for me, I'm not good enough to just go on a track and just kill it every time from off the rip. So here I keep seeing that he's going, he, he goes a little bit far on the line. I try to match his line though, even though I'm far, I'm really trying hard to match his line a little bit late on my transition, but just trying to see, and you can actually notice there, he changed his line and I changed my line because I thought he was going to take a different one too. So I'm really, like I've talked about again, maybe I should stop saying that because these are all kind of the same ideas, but I'm really trying to have an active chase where I'm paying attention, seeing what he's doing, uh, what I can change, what lines he's taking or not taking, right? And again, I'm looking at his line. I'm letting him initiate much earlier than me, but really trying to attempt to initiate at the same spot at least, and then see if I can uh, re-catch up, especially this one where it's a very aggressive entry. I'm just trying to fill it out. It's very easy on these uh, fast entries that scrub a lot of speed to just go full send and then end up running into the person in front of you. i uh, really trying to avoid that here anytime I can, honestly. The next track we move to now, I don't know if anyone knows about this. I'm sure some of you might. Uh, Cream Brulee Island. Interesting name. I have never heard about it. Not only have I never heard about it, uh, it, it was like not even findable. I, I literally couldn't find it anywhere which was actually insane to say out loud but yeah shout out to I, I totally spacing who gave it to us but it was suggested it was voted on and uh yeah it was actually a pretty cool track it's uh, it kind of reminds me of a little bit of brooklyn a little bit shadow elevation changes a nice little entry i would love to see a little bit more seat time on this track if the uh the lobbies vote for them but let's just quickly kind of talk about these different lines that i'm taking and again remember or at least keep in mind, I'm trying to think of what is going to make the most sense to uh, continue my momentum and support uh, basically a big drift train. So here I'm going on the outside. I'm thinking I should probably cut in a little bit here, taking the inside line. Here I was able to, as time went on, able to link that without having to correct too much. Here kind of filling out the line, maybe going a little bit too wide. I'm going to try to focus again on the, uh, the first person cam, but Definitely look at, during this video, if you haven't already, on these lead positions, uh, the track cam. It'll kind of tell you a lot about the train health behind me. And you can kind of see, like, is it an issue with the lead? Is it an issue with maybe them uh, expecting a different type of corner? Here you can see, like, they're a little bit more shallow on that angle. You can kind of learn a little bit, too, and see how my actions correlate to the people behind me. Because I think a lot of us, myself included, minus these videos, don't have the luxury of being able to see this live i only can see this and learn from it because of uh, honestly really this series so thanks thanks for uh, watching it and enjoying it guys but now we are on a little chase i think i don't want to say for sure but i think this is a little bit of a a soft chase also if you notice we have one of our swarm friends in the building doing a little bit of a run with us here on creme brulee island but yeah i'm just trying to stay far Maniac uh, kind of filling out the lines too there. You can see I was trying to correct it to catch back up. You can see how bad of an idea that was. I think I should have just maybe even straightened and just uh, reset. But here I'm just trying to chase him, trying to see what how he's approaching this. You know, there were only a couple... I think at this point we're only a couple uh, runs in or so. 
So just trying to see how he's taking lines. You can see how much of a shallow line I'm taking in comparison. But again, trying to catch up to him, trying to be chaseable, I would say I'd probably give this a, a D, if not like a C minus at best for like catching up and being chaseable. I don't really think it was very good on my part, but I am looking at the red arrows. I feel like the proximity of red arrows are pretty big. So if I don't see a red arrow, I don't sweat it as much. But once I see a red arrow behind me, I typically try to tighten it up, especially for uh, chasing. So here, like now I see a red arrow. Hopefully I don't uh, eat my own words and start becoming uh, a little bit unchaseable. But yeah, also like you can see, we're now synced up with the guy in front of him. I can't see for some reason he reset. But that's also another thing too. Like I think Maniac did a good job not being too aggressive in what turned from his lead to a chase. And then same for me, like when that happens, we don't really know how it's going to react. Just trying to hold a lot of that proximity there. Make sure if someone is behind me, because I did see that red arrow, I'm given enough space to work with. So here's another chase. I would, I would probably call this a soft chase. I'm not sure if it was the track or my driving. I think this is the last day on, on Friday, actually. So might've been a little bit tired. They're trying to help him with the correction. And you can see like how bad that would have messed people up behind us. Luckily, we're still kind of learning out the track, not too worried about people behind us or really our stability. At least I, I'm concerned with it, but really I'm more focused on learning the track and trying to keep a little bit of proximity with him, but getting a little bit more aggressive with the proximity here, a little bit early on the transition, which then you could see I tapped on as rear bumper. And here I'm seeing that he's running the full outside. And right there, you notice, because I had enough of a proximity gap, he was trying to really push that outside. I was able to continue the drift without having any issues for him on the recovery. And if there was people behind me, I wouldn't have had any issues too. That's kind of what I talk about being a cushion or maybe like a stabilizer. Maybe I'll think of like a different, I'll, I'll maybe think of a name, unless you guys like that name. But yeah, just trying to stay with him. Not trying to be too aggressive here. Just trying to learn what he's doing, what I can do different. Still trying to stay near him though. And then also having, because I'm near him, being able to practice, trying to transition at the same time. Really cool sunset back there. Sorry, a little distracting. But yeah, shallowing in a little bit, but here catching back into the sink. A little bit of a transition. I'm kind of going a little bit slow. That corner is actually kind of weird, man. I, and honestly, I guess I don't really have a lot of uh, line advice on this track. I'm still learning it, but maybe next time, if we get more time, I'll, I'll be able to give a better insight into it. But now we switch to Saturday. We're actually on Lime Rock. A cult classic, as I've said before, if not just a classic in its own right. Here we're falling 40K. We haven't driven with this man in quite a while. So I'm just giving him a decent amount of space, trying not to be too aggressive. Definitely taking a little bit of an advantage here. And you can see as he slowed down, I bumped him up. Now, because I was matching his angle, it really wasn't too disruptive, but that is something that you want to think about when you're in your chase position is making sure that you're not breaking or losing a lot of that momentum. Because really, again, it is a train. If you think of a train, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not sure where I'm going to go with that, but let's just say an accordion. <laughs> let's just say an accordion. I'm so sorry, dude. So sorry. But yeah, just trying to be smooth and consistent, staying with 40, kind of seeing how his lines are. Even though this is a very driven track, I would say for most people, it is interesting to see how different everyone's uh, take is on the different lines. But yeah, working hard to stay on proximity. Here, pushing him a little bit because uh, I can not aggressively I'm not trying to like slam in his door but just taking advantage of some of that proximity that kind of opened up for me and then here stabbing in a little bit but again i'm trying to think about staying on that forward momentum with him acting like there's people behind me and then here interesting that i threw in like uh, a couple runs from lime rock we're behind foul it's probably the sunrise or something i don't know I don't know in hindsight, but this is a really fun track to drive during the night. It's kind of scary though, for sure. And, and if uh, and if you're on a lead, I mean, it, this having no lights at all during this night day cycle really uh, pushes your track knowledge and memorization of what's what's going on. 
couple uh, late transitions from me trying to take a wide outside line to ensure stability if people are behind me which we have one person behind me and still trying to stay close as hell if i can a little bit of entry here a little bit late you could kind of see that from the first person view too kind of feels almost like a stumbling trying to stay close to the door still You can see there on that track cam, all three of us looking pretty close. I think uh, it's really satisfying watching uh, transition synchronization. It's actually one of my favorite things to watch. It's so hard not to try to get the track from the track cam. But there you can see I tried to transition. Third person behind me on the chase. A little bit too close. Maybe we made a couple mistakes there they weren't expecting. Ended up uh, hitting me a little bit, but we were able to get right back on it. So no problem at all. Now we transition back to Rhythm and Flow. Like I said, we were on this quite a bit this weekend. Here, same idea. I'm in P2, so I don't have two people behind me to worry about, but I do have our lead and a couple cars behind me. And here, again, you lose a lot of momentum on the uphill, so I'm trying to match his angle, not using much, if any, left foot brake or especially E brake. Here, I think I need to trust the car a little bit more on that outside. I always end up going a little bit too in. And then you can see right there, I got a little bit too aggressive, too close to him, kind of ruined his angle and what he was trying to do. And if there was a lot more people or even just one car a little bit closer to me, that would have then cascaded into an issue for them to try to figure out too. So now we go into another run. We have Foul in front, Yasko behind him. Both drivers that I've driven with before. But again, we don't really know how their synchronization is. We're not really sure necessarily how they're going to be driving together. So I'm still decently close on proximity, but trying to just stay close to them and kind of see how they're driving, what's going to make sense a little bit early on the transition there. But sticking with Yasko's door, running a little bit better on the outside, trying to look at, and, and this is something we've talked about before as well, is I'm looking at the front I'm looking at the person in front of him, but I'm also looking at him, but I'm kind of seeing like, what is that lead driver doing? And really like Yasko or any P2 is going to hopefully be matching his line and this angle. So that gives us a little bit of insight, especially if we're having a little bit of a gap, uh, an air gap for that stability within the train. But now we move over to BHS Old Tree Drift Track, another one of my personal favorites that I still am enjoying quite a bit. Here we have Fresh in the lead in front of us. I don't know if I have driven a lot with him on this track. So I'm kind of just seeing how he's taking the lines. You can see he's taking a little bit more of a shallow on that big sweeper. And then here, I think a lot of people take much differently. So I gave a little bit more of a room, a little bit of a cushion to see how he would react to that. You can see a little bit of tap that actually, because you have to be so shallow, but still in drift there, kind of messed him up. And yeah, I'm just kind of keeping a little bit of gap Again, I treat most of my chases like there is someone behind me. I think there was a couple sessions within this last weekend that I tried to be a little bit more aggressive and watch it back to see what the impact is of that aggression on the train. Nothing really stood out to me. So who knows, you know, maybe in the future, my opinion might change. I have no idea, but I'm always happy to say when I'm wrong for sure. But here we switch to another run and actually we are on P4. So we have three people in front of us, a little bit of a proximity gap between P2, P3. And I've been following Fresh, but again, we don't know how Fresh is going to be on his follow with Foul. So we're just leaving a little bit of an extra gap. You can see that kind of develop in the track camera there. Yeah, I'm just trying to stay behind him, not pushing too crazy. Just trying to watch the guy in front of him, which in this case will be our P2 or Foul. And then there you can see me cutting actually a very different line. Now I was so far back, I was able to cut the line. And then you saw also behind me, they were able to continue without much of an interruption because I took a line that was still chaseable, but yet a little bit modified just to re-sync with the train. Once you fall out of that synchroniz uh, synchronization, it really is hard to try to like recoup that. So I'll, I'll always try to prioritize that if I can. But now we switch to Seika Hills. Now, this is another track that I spent, I think, most of my time, actually, on the lead run. 
I was really trying to work on these different lines. And if you notice, I'm not sure if you remember the last time we were on this track. Before we were cutting left there, now we're actually cutting or running this whole track. Technically, this is the true layout. I think this is uh, track layout A, if I remember right. But yeah, we have Scooby in front of us. I haven't driven with him. I have seen him compete in a couple series. It was really, really fun to drive with him and see his lines. But here you can see again, have a little bit bigger of a proximity gap than maybe I'd like to. But this track has a lot of emphasis, at least for me. I'm sure you could take it different on the e-brake. Uh, a lot of e-brake, I guess like many entries almost. Even here, you're going to see, I think a little bit of e-brake as well. Yep. There it is. But still trying to e-brake. And, and again, just because I'm e-braking doesn't mean that I necessarily will lose my momentum. So trying to be conscious of that. I do see a red arrow, I think, popping up here and there behind me. So... Uh, as always, but definitely more so now. I'm treating this like there is a couple people behind me, potentially. This little section, by the way, it does seem like you want to commit. Kind of maybe cut it on the inside a little bit and then have this outside and run out to your right. A little bit of transition here. And then a big circle. You can see, actually, I would took that a little bit too shallow, I'd argue. A little bit too shallow would have been a little bit hard to chase. I think the guy behind me keeping up no problem, though. And then here you can run basically the outside-ish, maybe mid outside lines. Here you I really do want to run the outside. I've tried it a couple different times, but I think for people chasing, uh, you really want to run it outside so it's chaseable for everyone. But now we switch to a track we haven't seen actually in a while, Motopark Kazalin. I think I'm pretty close with that. Scooby again in a lead. Absolutely killed it. I knew, uh, or at least I was thinking because he has done couple AC competitions. I don't know a ton about his history, but I know I've seen him in a few that uh, he would be probably focusing on these different outside zones. So here, just trying to really follow him. I was being a little bit more, I wouldn't say like aggressive, but I was trying to be a little bit more forward with my chase. I don't see any red arrows. So I think a little bit of opportunity to learn from him. I do see a red arrow now. So hopefully you'll see me uh, soften up a little bit. Luckily, Scooby is a very uh, consistent driver, so I don't have to worry too much about um, being too aggressive because I know he's going to continue that forward momentum throughout his lines. And also, shout out to uh, hitting that corner almost well. Very close, almost well. But now we're on to a chase run with Mods, our friend Mods in the lead, and actually Scooby behind us. So I think there was actually a little bit of a swap. We were running together and then he swapped behind. So I did I didn't know Scooby was behind me. So I wanted to try to be a little bit more assertive on this chase if I could. Try to really push mods on this track. And I know it's one of his favorite tracks, I think, if not like his top five. So I'm really trying to learn from what he's doing. Really trying to hone in, make sure I'm not taking too big of angles. Not... Uh, Really, I guess, really having wide angles or over increased corrections. Really trying to stay and match all those transitions. Here, making a little bit of mistake, tapping him on the uh, outside rear quarter. He's able to recover, thankfully. But I, I don't, uh, I don't get as scared because I know, or I hope, <laughs> he's okay with me making a couple of mistakes here. But now we switch to. I guess this is, yeah, back to Rhythm and Flow. We actually have Turbo, who we haven't seen this entire video, which is kind of crazy to think about. But we have Turbo in the lead, fresh behind him, a couple cars behind me. We've been talking a lot about that uh, cushion, that stabilization. I think Rhythm and Flow is a pretty good track to kind of accentuate what that can or what that does look like. Again, I'm just trying to stay with them, take the same lines. Really, like, if I'm going to lose proximity, if I'm struggling a little, a little bit with that, I want to continue to have a, like, consistent bigger proximity gap, I guess, if I could say. And then also really working on following that line and those transitions. And you can kind of see, hopefully, a little bit. I was really looking at P1, and in that case, Turbo, to see what his lines, what his angle was going to be. And also, at the same time, watching P2, making sure I wasn't doing anything crazy there. But yeah, you can see a little bit of a dive that I just made there. Luckily, P3 was able to stabilize a little bit. But if there was a lot more people, there would be a lot more dives. Kind of like uh, if you're in traffic, I don't know if this is too much, but if you're in traffic and like one person stops in the free or slows down the freeway, 
next person slows down a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more you know you see like literally people stopped on the freeway basically because it kind of trickles down right that's kind of why i refer to these things as an accordion so any mistake that you make in p2 uh is gonna then most likely trickle down to p3 and whoever else is back there i think a lot of people say i don't struggle a lot in p2 but i struggle a lot in p3 or in these further back positions and i think that's a uh, probably a big part of it a lot of p people that are good in p2 are good in p2 because they only have to worry about p1 but in reality i think if you're in a p2 or any position outside of the the chase or the lead like the very end of the train or the front of the train you should be driving for the person in front and behind you at the same time basically right i think you guys heard me say that a few times here and there but yeah same idea i'm not sure uh how professor and yasko's synergy are you'll see here at the track cam a little bit of a tap and i think there's a section in here that you're going to see uh that really accentuates more like what making a mistake can lead to drivers behind you too also i think even taking like lines that are not very healthy can really impact everyone else uh behind you also if i didn't mention it this is lime rock by the way <laughs> sorry i think I, I think i might have said it i'm not sure but yeah here's another example i'm p2 i'm with a driver in front of me who i haven't driven with before i'm keeping just a moderate amount of proximity between the two of us still i'd argue not too bad still pretty close still within the train and then if you look at the track camera here, if I remember correctly, you're going to see a dive from P3, and then P4 is going to make a mistake, P5 is going to tap him, P6 is out, and it's gone. I mean, and then you see the train is completely gone. And this is not a slight on any driver at all. Uh, I make these mistakes as well. But that's kind of like an actionable thing for you guys to see, how that does impact other people around you, and can kind of terminate an, an entire train. But yeah, man, as always, this video just went by really quick. It was a little bit shorter this weekend because we did watch FD. If you guys are interested, definitely join up during FD. We try to do watch parties there. But other than that, man, I hope you guys had a good time. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Really appreciate all the support you guys have been given. And shout out to everyone that's been joining the server, man. We keep on growing. So if you haven't already, join the Discord, join the server. And uh, genuinely, I hope to see you guys out there. We're all here getting better. The more of us that are out there, the more fun it is, the more... Uh, people we can kind of improve and learn from and grow together. Other than that, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.